What's up everybody, this is Danny and today it's that time. iPhone 15 Pro Max versus the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. So this is one of the first camera comparisons coming up where I wanna test the new 5X zoom on the new iPhone 15 Pro Max versus the 10X optical on the S23 Ultra. I know it's not fair, but I just wanna see how the new iPhone stacks up against the S23 Ultra. Let's do this. I'm so glad I'm in New York City this week. This is the perfect place to test the new 5X lens on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Jumping right into it, a lot of these images will be personal preference based, but I'm glad to see Apple cut back on the sharpening some. When you punch in, just look at how over sharpened the S23 Ultra looks in comparison. This could be because of the new 24 megapixel output binning from the 48 megapixel sensor, but regardless, it's great to see. I'll talk more about this later, but we'll touch on a lot of this here too while testing the zoom. This image is definitely more vibrant, punchy, and the colors are more saturated, so if you like that look, you're gonna side with the S23 Ultra, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just here to guide you on the differences to make your best buying decision. They both have 12 megapixel ultra wide lenses, maybe a touch wider on the S23 Ultra, again, brighter on the highlights on the Samsung, which is their signature look. The vibrancies on the trees really stand out on the Samsung, but again, here's a good look into the processing where the iPhone looks to be less sharpened and retains more detail. Here's the S23's first choice of zoom, and that is the 3X, where the iPhone now has a 2X cropped option, and that is also 24 megapixels, by the way. Here's a new 5X zoom on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and that infamous 10X optical zoom on the S23 Ultra. So cool to have that in your pocket. Since the ranges really don't match up, what I wanted to do is test the zoom equally, digital or not. And then when you zoom into this, you can see what that 24 megapixel output is doing. Look at the details on the brick and the building here on the side. That is impressive. Here is the 2X versus 3X zoom. When punching in here, you can see that the 3X telephoto does a better job of bringing out the details on the S23 Ultra, which is interesting. Then here is the 5X optical zoom on the iPhone and 5X digital zoom on the S23 Ultra. This is self-explanatory. You can see that the image is not it's detailed and little muddy, exactly what we expected from digital zoom. And then here's the 10X optical on the S23 Ultra and 10X digital on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I couldn't believe how well the iPhone actually kept up here. It is noisier for sure, but this is much better than I expected. Since I was in the area, I thought I would jump on the Staten Island Ferry. This is free, by the way. Man, what a difference in color replication, though. The iPhone in this case was the more accurate one, if you care. There's a shot of Governor's Island with the 3X and 2X. They both look pretty much the same as the main. There is the 5X with both of them, and besides the sharpening, the Samsung did pretty good. There is the 10X zoom comparison, of course, better on the Ultra, but not horrible at all on the iPhone and 30x zoom on the S23 Ultra. Not something that you would use every day, but it's cool to have. What I was really here for was to snap the Statue of Liberty, and here you can see the differences in lens flaring, both there, but more noticeable on the iPhone. On the first telephoto choice, surprised to see some purple flaring here on the Samsung, a nice green dot on the iPhone. Here is the 10X and the 5X optical cameras again. The renditions are so different when it comes to color, and here is the 10X digital to match the iPhone. Next, the 30X zoom versus the 25X maximum zoom on the iPhone. As expected, the Samsung is much more usable. They're both noisy, but the iPhones is worse. And again, that 100 times zoom. Here's the one I took of the 3X versus the 5X on the zoom, and that vibrancy looks nice on the S23 Ultra, but I appreciate the accuracy of the iPhone as well. Punching in here, here's the detailed difference between these two lenses. The 10X optical zoom is where you really win with the S23 Ultra in situations like this. Lots of of details. The iPhone is a little muddier and washed out, but again, I expected much worse. If you are picking up an iPhone 15 Pro Max for the zoom, I would really stick to the 5X lens. If you go beyond it, the results are hit or miss. Sometimes you even get some decent results even at the Max 25X, just a lot of noise. If you want to go beyond the 5X optical, I would stick to the 10X digital. I think that is about as far as you should go because if you do the maximum zoom at 25X, most of the time I think you'll be disappointed. The image is noisy and the details aren't there. But Apple never advertises phone as zooming that far, so make sure you keep that in mind. While I was on the ferry, I wanted to test video. I thought this would be a good way to test the handheld stabilization. Also, you can check how smooth the transitions are too when switching to the zoom lenses. The iPhone does appear to have better stabilization here, and I thought that might be due to the new sensor shift stabilization, but then I realized that the movements are a little more exaggerated on the 10X because the video was so zoomed in. They are both picking up the natural movement of the boat. The S23 Ultra is a little jerkier when switching to the 10X zoom, but if you want this type of reach with this amount of detail during the day, then the S23 Ultra camera is for you. 
If you just want an example of the full range on video, then here you go. There is the 3X versus the 2X zoom on the first choice and daytime video looks great on both of these. It's going to be preference on which one that you like. I'm going to zoom into 10X on the S23 Ultra and then 5X on the iPhone. And minus the focal length difference, I prefer the video look on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. It's sharper, it's more detailed, and the contrast ratio is on point in this scenario. But what's crazy is I did a 10X to 10X comparison on video just for fun and I'm really surprised how this turned out. I I honestly thought that the iPhone 15 Pro Max was going to get killed on this test, but wow, it really held up well. So if you've always wanted that extra zoom on your iPhone, the 15 Pro Max is a go. Sunset was like a movie yesterday. The colors were unreal, so this was a great way to test dynamic range. The two cameras have very different renditions. Sunset was more in the middle of these two, but the dynamic range is looking fantastic on both. The 10X and 5X were both of my favorite shots. Let me know which one that you would share on social media in the comment section below. But what I was absolutely blown away by is the portrait mode on the 5X camera on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, and this gave me that 120 millimeter focal length equivalent which I didn't appreciate until I just started taking photos out in the scenery. This is a perfect focal length for distance street photography. I love the emotion that I could capture with it. The background separation and roll off really look like something not shot on a smartphone in this scenario. Now don't get me wrong the Galaxy S23 Ultra does a really great job with portrait mode. It was one of my favorites all year and still is but this 5x lens really blew me away when it comes to portrait mode shots so let me know if you agree. Here's a great example a photo of Ennebong or Bored at Work. The skin tone itself is personal preference and they both look great, but punch into the image and look into the detail on his shirt and the exposure. There is a huge difference here. Then let's move on to the 5X portrait shot and wow, that looks absolutely incredible. Beautiful bouquet in the background, incredible detail on his face and again, punch in and that detail difference is very noticeable. So that processing this year has definitely stepped up. So if camera is number one on your priority list and you're an iPhone user, then this is the reason to get the Pro Max. The distance it triggers portrait mode from is amazing for street photography. And I can't wait to use this more when I travel. Nighttime is where it got a little tricky for me. The main lenses were always on point, but the 3X when it doesn't go into night mode can look a little muddy on the S23 Ultra. The 5X looks noisy on the iPhone, but the S23 Ultra never lock focus on the 10X. And I thought this was a fluke, so I had to try it again the s23 ultra nice and sharp here with night mode and it looks great and while over processed the 3x night mode looks much better than the 3x without night mode but on the 10x i had it happen to me again with it being blurry at nighttime so i hope samsung can fix this in a software update i'm going to be 100 real i don't take a lot of zoom shots at night but i had to do it for you guys neon signs are always a little hard to get perfect but this is going to be personal preference of course the samsung does a great job of evening out the entire light with amazing sharpness and clarity so I think some will like that. Now this main shot looks very similar on the neon from a distance but you can see a clear difference with the zoom. The iPhone is trying to capture the variance of brightness with the neon light where the S23 Ultra just blends it all into one color. On the last optical zoom I think I prefer the iPhone as a base. It's not perfect but I can edit that down with more contrast and the gradation of the pink color is also nice here. On the opposite end of the spectrum outside of the hotel the iPhone does the same thing where it blends the blue colors together where the s23 ultra picks up the up lighting which is accurate on the first level zoom shot you can see the crazy blending that is happening here where the samsung kept the colors intact on the ultra wide shot of that wall the iphone does pick up that color so i know it's a software thing so i hope they look into this but just one optical zoom level in and the blending happens again Let's test the detail with all three lenses. The iPhone tends to land warm at night, so I saw that across almost all of the pictures. The Galaxy S23 Ultra does the exact opposite and tends to land cold, accentuating the blue, so this is all going to be personal preference again. The 5X zoom at night does have great detail though, as you can see. Look at the brick texture, it's nice and crisp. Just like during the day, if you're going beyond 5X at night, then you'll probably be disappointed. I just took some pictures out of my hotel room, and while this is not ideal because you're going through glass, you can see after the first zoom option, they both don't do so well. But for sure, the S23 Ultra does better without night mode when it comes to zoom. 
Now, if you can get the iPhone 15 Pro Max to go into night mode like here, this is where the iPhone does well. But granted, this was a five second exposure time compared to the three seconds on the S23 Ultra. But once again, I will stick to the 5X zoom when it comes to the night shots on the iPhone. Those combined with the night mode can get some nice results. I by no means expected it to beat the S23 Ultra with this native 10x zoom, but take a look at this shot from outside of the window, and then with 10x you can see that power of optical zoom. I still think there is nothing like it right now. The iPhone 15 Pro Max's 5x lens isn't the biggest sensor, so you can expect some noise in the 5x shots, especially when it doesn't trigger night mode, but it surprised me when taking side-by-side -side pics with the S23 Ultra. Here is a 3x and a 5x, and while I believe noise reduction can be improved there is a uniform noise pattern on the iphone's image the noise reduction smears out the brick detail where the iphone still retains it so that's the difference that i can see of course the 10x zoom compared to the digital is better on the ultra so if you want the farthest zoom at night with the best quality the s23 ultra is still the phone to get but if you normally just take shots with the main lens like this one but just need that little bit of extra reach you can use the 2x but i do have to admit i like the 3x reach a little more for my first choice here's one more example of a full night mode zoom test with the main lens take a look up here and see what that 24 megapixel binning is doing picking up a lot of detail across the photo this is a big difference here is the 3x versus the 2x i do like the way that the s23 ultra is rendering this with a cooler tone so i think it looks better overall but that detail in the 5x night mode is nice so if you're afraid that it wasn't going to be good at night then there's your answer the 5x portrait mode at night can take some amazing pictures like it did during the daytime when the lighting is right the natural way it renders bokeh is really impressive when using this lens i do wish there was a night mode on on this lens because I couldn't get it to trigger so let me know if you see night mode on your 5x portrait I think it would help clear up some of the softer edges again I just love the bouquet just look at that background there are some inconsistencies but I feel for the most part that the iPhone has improved the edge detection all around but sometimes Samsung still has the better outcome but hey that's not zoom is it so let's move straight into video in moderate low light they both do a good job very similar looking video actually which is a good thing and Punching into 3x on the Ultra, you see a more saturated scenario, but a really sharp one, which is awesome to see. I was curious to see how the 5x zoom does on video here, and besides the contrast level, it looks pretty good, but the 10x zoom doesn't look great in low light, so it's not going to be a lens that you're going to want to use if there isn't a good light source around. At the Little Italy Festival, I was digging the way that the S23 Ultra handle all of the bright lights showing higher dynamic range. It is picking up too much red though, so I prefer the colors on the iPhone in this scenario, but the iPhone 15 Pro Max isn't really handling the bright light source as well, so I hope they tune this over time. I will test out some more scenarios when I do a dedicated video on the video capabilities, but check this out. When you go into the 5X camera, the sensor size actually has an advantage here. It evened out all of those lights, and now it looks really good. The noise is nowhere near as bad as I thought it would be, so that is a good thing. So just to make sure, I changed the lenses back to make sure that it wasn't a software glitch. So Samsung props to the video at night. It's looking legit besides the color tweaking. So hopefully you guys can fix that in a software update. No one is going to be doing this, but I thought I would show you anyways. When you're in 5X zoom on the iPhone or 10X zoom, don't walk because they both can be a little rough with stabilization. The Ultra being a longer zoom lens, the stabilization is crazy bad. I just found this by accident when I was changing lenses for video, but I wouldn't worry about this at all. If you're just hand holding to take a video in these telephoto lens choices, then you will be just fine. Look at how steady both of these are if you're just standing still and taking in a video from far away. So there you have it, a too long of a zoom test, but you're definitely gonna know what to expect. Let me know if the iPhone 15 Pro Max surprised you or if you think that the S23 Ultra just crushes it. Sound off in the comments below. Subscribe for a lot more camera comparisons coming up and I will see you in the next one.